The first player worldwide already got to legend in Group Battle League after three weeks. Congrats to Juanio95 and thanks a lot for letting me showcase some of your battles. Today we're gonna take a look at the battles that he had just before he got to the legend rank as well. And the most insane thing here as well is like you have a team that's pretty pretty easy to get we're going to have a charizard here we of course need two elite teams if you didn't get any of the moves previously here with a wing attack the blast burn and yeah like it's very very still achievable like you get elite teams anyway for free every season and then we're going to have the wall rain which just recently had a community day again and a pokemon that you just have to raid once that does need xl cannings with the tabo fini which is insanely interesting i haven't taken a look at single battle yet so I'm curious on how good this is. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like, would really appreciate it. And of course, a link to his Twitter is in the description. So if you want to follow him, please do that. We're going to face here a uh, Swampert with the Wall Rain. This is a pretty neutral matchup. Swampert really has to hit the Earthquake here to do, do any damage against you here. So. You're actually in a pretty decent spot and also your Tabu Fini in the back can still deal with that. What are you going to do here? You're going to shield this move up, good bait by the opponent. Of course, you're going to play here against a lot of people who also know what they're doing. So if you find a team that the opponents play, for example, they're also going to be very good teams for the Open World League because they're all in super high elo ranges right now. We're going to see that they are going to still get to an Earthquake. That's going to be a little bit awkward. You have to hope that Tabu Fini can sweep end game and it's going to be a Mandibus in the bag. Goodbye, opponent. We see a Weezing in the lead here. That's kind of neutral-ish. Of course, Earthquake is a very good move to hit against this Pokemon, but they can go ahead and go for Player of or the Overheat here. It's going to be a Brutal Swing, actually, going for the bait. Also, who's going for the bait here? This player going for the Icicle Spear, getting the shield, which is amazing, as we see... Most likely shield coming up here as well. Yeah, exactly. But it's actually a brutal swing bait again. Like a lot of baits coming up here. Giratina swapping into a war rain is an interesting play here. They tried to catch the earthquake. This didn't work out for them. And this is not a good matchup for the Giratina whatsoever. And you will be able to even take a move here. Even if it's an ancient power, you still survive. Going to be a dragon claw. And you can go for another charge move to knock them out. And you're in such a good position already now. Is you going to face the opponent's next Pokemon? Going to be Weezing again. Brutal Swing coming through again. Shouldn't be really an issue for you. And you can go ahead and go into your Tapu Fini. Interesting play to go into a Tapu Fini against a Poison type Pokemon. But uh, Weezing doesn't really have any good Poison type moves. So this is definitely a very decent matchup for you. Surf gonna come through. Surf gonna knock them out, I thought. But no, they're actually going to shield it still. So they seem to be weak to Tapu Fini in the back. That's also the reason why you try to keep it around. And you're going to shield a Brutal Swing, which is kind of. Kind of unfortunate, but at least you can align your next Pokemon. It's going to be a Tabu Fini as well. That's going to be an awkward scenario for you. You can go for... I think you still survive on Surf here, hopefully. It's going to... Just barely does not KO. You can go for the Moonblast. This does do a ton of damage. And now you have to go for the Blast Burn to knock them out. Can you still get there in time? You cannot, but I think you still survive it. Let's see, you do, and this is actually enough to knock out the opponent. What a close game here. If you see already on the right side, the IVs, there are no IVs this time around. They didn't want to leak them. The main reason for this is that actually other people, for example, for like Sylph, can take a look at this and then know if they win CMP or not. So I respect this play that they don't want to reveal the IVs. All fine for that. But like, if you're wondering why there's a question mark there, we don't know. We won't know. And um, this is totally fine. We see an earthquake coming through. Good shield from you and Warren itself is a little bit tricky to deal with this team as well. Um, all Pokemon are kind of neutral against it, it feels like um, but nothing really stands out as a good answer but <laughs> Earthquake's just straight from both sides here both shielding this up. This does not KO. This does around like 60% of its health and you will be able to still survive the opponent's Earthquake as well like this and you should be able to realign your Pokemon, which with the backline is pretty important, but the opponent actually going to snipe you, which is a very good play by the opponent, going for the Seed Bump here. You're forced to go into your Charizard now against the opponent's Trevenant, and they can go for one Shadow Ball in time as well, which is awkward. You're still going to be able to survive it. You can go for a Blast Wind and knock out the opponent's Trevenant, but it's still going to be a little bit of a trickier one. You have to swap immediately into your Tapu Fini so you don't get farmed down, but we see a Cobalion in the back. This is actually a pretty decent matchup, but I think two... Oh, they go straight for the Sacred Sword here? What is it? No, actually, they were already at the Stone Edge. I didn't count the moves correctly. Very nice of me. But um, <laughs> you're still going to be able to survive too, but it's going to still be a very close one. Moonblast coming through, going to put them into range where you can farm them down, which is not 
nice. And you definitely need the farm as you have to still get to one surf against the opponent here. It's going to be such a close game here. Do you still win this? You're gonna get them low. You're going to knock them out. You're going to swap immediately into your Charizard, trying to reach for the Dragon Claw, and this is coming through there. What a nice play again from this player. Going for the um, swap into the Charizard there just to get to the Dragon Claw in time. Very, very nice. Next opponent. Oh, this looks horrible. Warren against Ampharos. You see the entire team is weak against any electric type Pokemon. They're pretty rare, especially in the open auto league because of the um, Giratina, of course, which usually just hardwalls them. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a tough one. But you're still going to be able to get your shield back here at least, which is nice. And you can go ahead and shield this move up as well, I guess. You don't. You're going to let this move go through. You're going to go into Tabo Fini trying to shield this move most likely. Oh, are you? You're actually going to let this move go through as well. You're going to rely on your Charizard in the end. Can be a little bit tricky. Um, Moonblast coming through now. Do you get the shield from the opponent? You're going to get the shield. So they're going to most likely just go for an Icicle Spear here. No need for them to go for an Earthquake, exactly. And you can still reach the next move in time. They're going to get to two Icicle Spears 100% now. So you're going to shield the first one, the second one coming in now. Um, if you count correctly, you might get some extra energy, but still a little bit tricky because they have also a little, little bit more energy, but very nice counting there from you. You can go ahead and go for one Blast Burn. They're going to go into a Cressalia and this is game over. Like There's nothing you can do here anymore. Um, good game there to the opponent. Just an electric type Pokemon alone is a little bit tricky for this team, but they're not really rare, so uh, they're not really rare, they're not really common, I mean. So it's not the biggest issue for it either, but like this, it just was a little bit tricky to do. We see an opponent with a Stunfisk in the lead. This is actually a very neutral lead, as you have access to Earthquake, which is a super effective move against them. and does a little bit more damage than what their Rock Sight's doing here, and as well, you're going to be able to survive too. I guess this is an advantage for the non-shadow version of this Pokemon here, as you're going to be able to survive two rock sites which you wouldn't do otherwise and you can go straight for true earthquakes here i guess they're still gonna get to another rock site in time though and you kind of want to shield this up i guess yes exactly going to be able to go for an earthquake now i think you wait actually for the fast move to go through first which is smart and we see oh a trevenant coming in this is basically the worst possible thing that you can face but i think you're still gonna get a shield here right either you get them lower you get the shield because the seed bomb does not knock you out and you can still go ahead and go for one moon blast here Moonblast coming through, Moonblast gonna get the shield for you, but they're gonna get a ton of energy, so they're most likely going to get the shield back as well from your Charizard. Going to be a tough one still, this doesn't look like a really good matchup for you yet, as we see the shield most likely coming up against the Seed Bomb, that's even more annoying, but you know the counts, and yes, was a perfect swap on the Shadow Ball, amazing play here again. We will see you going for the CMP time, or you're going to go for the farm down, because they're going to get only 2-1 Seed Bomb now, and now we have a ton of energy, and this can flip everything. We see the Cressalia coming in, going to get hit by one Blast Burn, never mind, they swapped into the Stunfist just in this last second, we didn't even see on the screen, like, that. I didn't even see the swap out there. What a, what a nice play by the opponent as well. I think this is enough to knock them out here. And yeah, it's a future side going to win the game because of that. What a play by the opponent though. Crazy. Next opponent, we will see a Swampert in the lead. This is a little bit tricky, but... Um Again, like Earthquake going to hurt you a lot, but you're going to get to the Icicle Spear a little bit faster. Two Icicle Spears going to be enough to knock out the opponent. And we will see the Earthquake getting shielded. Very good shield by you. This will allow you to basically dominate this matchup now because they wasted so much energy. You can go for an Icicle Spear, get the shield back. They're going to get to another Earthquake here in time, though, which is a little bit tricky. But they, you're going to shield this move up as well. They do not get to another Earthquake before you can farm them down. So um, this should be a pretty safe one to just get a 100 energy here against this matchup. Which which is cool and you're going to go into your Tabu Fini which is smart you both Pokemon in the back going to be able to resist counter which is the main um, threatening move there against your lead which is really decent you're actually going to go for the bait here because it doesn't really hurt you too much either they're going to get the shield as well which is amazing and now you can go straight for one moon blast and knock out the opponent's crafty and it seems like they are weak to you in the back as well and as you have 100 energy still on your war rain like even if they have something in the back where you have some issues against it yeah there's nothing they can do anymore they have another dragon in the back like Warring will just knock that thing out as well. We see another Swampert in the lead. We saw that matchup just now. Let's see if the opponent baits are this time around or if he can actually shield two Earthquakes again. We see the Icicle Spear coming through, gonna do around half of its health again. And we see another shield most likely coming up. 
Earthquake can be up as well. So um, very decent for you. You are basically farm as much as you can, which is really good. And we will see the shield coming up from the opponent. Over farming again, because you know you wouldn't win CMP tie there. And it's exactly the same matchup as you had before, as you will be able to now go for another Icicle Spear. This time around, you don't farm them down because um, they didn't throw the Hydro Cannon, I guess. And now you have a shield disadvantage, but a ton of energy, and you have your wall rain around aligned against the opponent's wall rain, which is actually pretty decent because they still need at least like one earthquake and one icicle spear, I guess, a little bit more maybe even, um, to knock you out here, and you can still go for another earthquake. So now with that wall rain, got basically one Pokemon completely out of this game, and the next one with the opponent's wall rain, um, to low health. So now you have two Pokemon basically for one final one which is going to be a Charizard which is hilarious actually Charizard can win this matchup I think if you have a shield advantage which is kind of funny because Blast Burn you see already does a ton of damage but um like this you're still going to be able to win this game for sure because you have your own Charizard in the back even this is a Blast Burn which I don't think it is no it is actually yeah you're going to lose this matchup like that but you have a ton of energy on your own Charizard now the opponent has basically you know half left and this is going to be a clean one next opponent very good lead for you this team actually is a very good answer to the Pidgeot double fighting team which is maybe the main reason also why that got built here because both Pokemon in the back are going to be able to destroy um, the fighting types as also you are lead going to be able to destroy the Pidgeot that usually is there so definitely a team that should work out pretty well in every meta as well now so I would really recommend you to try this team out as well of course weak to electric types but they're not really common so we will see you're going to let this move go through you have no ish an shield advantage and you can get a ton of energy on your wall if you want to and you're going to do this but the opponent swaps out into their Cobalion you can go for an earthquake which forces them to shield your move I think do, does it? Yeah, it does force them. And now you can kind of force the shield up as well because one stone edge would just knock you out, but you no shield the bait, which is amazing here. You're going to shield up this next move because it's most likely not a bait. Oh, it's actually also a bait, but like, wow, that's crazy to no shield there because one stone edge would have completely obliterated you. And you will be able to now destroy the opponent's Cobalion. You know the entire team of the opponent. There's not a lot that this Pidgeot can do against this Charizard going straight for the Blast Burn. Destroying that bird as you can swap out into your Wall Rain, which is a very safe swap there. You can let this move go through, I think. Yeah, it's a Feather Dance as well. And now the opponent has basically no play. Pidgeot is going to do go down from this move. And we will see the Tapu Fini with 1 HP in the back coming in here. Going into the next game, we're going to see Greedent in the lead. This is a little bit tricky. Greedent is pretty bulky. And Greedent has a fast move that's super effective. Body Slam is Stab is a better move than your charge, charge move there with the Icicle Spear. So let's see what's going to happen here. We're going to see the Icicle Spear coming through, we're going to do some nice damage, but still Body Slam won't hurt a lot, and also they generate more energy than you. I think it's a matchup that Greedent usually wins, but you go straight for the Earthquake now. Let's see if they're going to shield this move up. They do not, and this puts them into range for one Icicle Spear. Maybe you're going to be able to actually knock them out here with your War Rain, but no, you are not, but this doesn't really matter. You get a ton of energy now with your Charizard, I would guess exactly and Charizard with energy advantage you don't know how strong this Pokemon can be if you get energy advantage like this on a Charizard this thing just goes to town you have 50 energy basically now and we see a Deoxys coming in you can go for one Blast Burn this does around half of its health Blast Burn going to go st through and you can go for another one as well in time as you're actually going to let them throw a move most like the Rock Side and actually go for Psycho Boost that's weird and you're going to go for your own charge move here you could swap out as well into your Tapu Fini but not yet, I guess. You can still get another ch charge move off here with the Blast Burn. This will also not knock them out. And are you going to shield this move or do you let this go? You're actually going to shield this move. They have Thunderbolt, which is something I didn't expect, but I guess for all the Tapu Fini. I don't know if a Dragon Claw already would have been close to be enough here, but we see the Weezing coming in. And against Weezing, I don't know if you still survive this move here, though. Brutal Swing should do a ton of damage yeah it knocks you out but it doesn't really matter too much because your Tapu Fini will be able to risk the moves and I think they're most likely had the um move set there with overheat and the foul play not foul play a brutal swing there so it was totally resisted by your Tapu Fini and they just forfeit going into the final match of this video we're going to see another war rain match up here against each other one shadow one non-shadow and you will be able to go for the earthquake in time going to try to knock them out straight away and they're going to shield this move up as well. Do they do they bait you here? 
You might want to let this move go through. You're going to shield up. It's going to be an earthquake. They actually never go for Batesy in the matchup, but they're going to catch the move on the chair. That this still does a ton of damage though, which is kind of funny because it's resisted. You're gonna get a ton of energy here as well. Trying to catch the move didn't work out, but you can now farm them all the way down with your Tapo Finny. I wonder if they can still get to two Blastwinds though. It might be enough for them. Let's see. But this might be just a Drain Claw. No, it's a Blastwin again, and you're going to be pretty low. But you have a ton of energy here, which is nice. Um, and see what's going to happen. We see a Giratina coming in. They definitely don't want to get hit by this Moonblast coming through. They're going to shield this move up. And they have Dragon Breath though, which is kind of awkward for you because they get a ton of energy now. But you can go for an Isaac Spear. Go and do some nice damage and I think you rely on your Charizard now. They should be able to go for one Dragon Claw and you should be hopefully fine here. Dragon Claw gonna get shielded because of the potential Ancient Power, I guess. And this next Dragon Claw also going to get through. We're going to see the Warring swapping in here. It's going to be a tough one to still win. Let's see, you can go for a Dragon Claw here. You have to go for the Dragon Claw to knock them out. I think that was the CMP type. Very well played there by you. And I hope this one more Dragon Claw does knock them out. I don't think it does do enough, but you still have your Warring in the back. So hopefully that thing can farm it down. And it can, and you win this game. Thanks so much for letting me showcase your battles. Um, leave a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you later for the Kira review with Glaciate. Bye!